come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the vivid world of your own imagination. To the miracle of your own mind's eye. We have all of us found ourselves at times in one predicament or another and wondered how in the world we got there. Our mystery drama, Hurricane, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Joseph Julian and E.V. Juster. Imagine yourself now in a beach house on the eastern shore of Florida. It's a wild and isolated part of the shore. And right now, the savage wind and rain of a hurricane are bludgeoning the house. In the living room, two men are playing Scrabble by the light of a kerosene lamp. One of them is quite young, in his 20s. His left eye is badly bruised. The other man is old, in his mid-thirties, perhaps. He is wearing a shoulder holster with a thirty-eight caliber revolver in it. Turn the radio on, Ronnie. Let's get the latest on the hurricane. Ronnie. Yeah? Don't get any fancy ideas. Don't make any sudden moves. What ideas? What moves? You could put a bullet in me before I get halfway to the door. And don't think I would, Mom. And Hurricane Donna roared out of the Atlantic, heading north by northwest up the Florida east coast. Winds up to 90 miles per hour have already been dropped at the Weather Bureau station in Miami, which warns that they are expected to reach a velocity of 110 miles per hour. I told you, no oh, sudden wait, moves. Wait, Get away from that window. I thought I heard a car. I did. The cars of the Overland Highway have been Joe, there's a car in the drive. Two people, a man and a woman, getting out. They're coming in. Damn. The keys have been Shut that thing off. Well, let me handle this. Don't give me any trouble, understand? Whatever you say, Joe. Yeah? We're sorry to trouble you, but will you let us in, please? I'm sorry, lady. We, the Overland Highway's underwater up ahead. We can't go on. We can't go back. You've got to take us in. There's a beach house about a half a mile. There was. It's been washed away. Oh. Well. Look, look, you can't turn us away. Not in this. Yeah. All right. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Martin Halliday. This is my wife, Fran. And you? Joe. Joe Carrington. And I'm Ronnie Prentice. You uh, may have heard of my father. All right. They don't want your life history. Pleasure meeting you. Say, that's quite a black eye you've got. Yeah, I got it. We went down to the dock uh, to secure our boat. Ronnie slipped. Oh, that's too bad. I can't help noticing, Mr. Harrington. He's gone. What about? Well, a little unusual, isn't it? I mean, wearing a shoulder holster and a gun in a house. <laughs> Makes me feel as if I'd walked into a Humphrey Bogart movie. Maybe you have. Oh? What do you mean, Mr. Prentice? He didn't mean anything. Making a joke is all. Hmm. Where are you from, you two? Siesta Key. Uh, yes, we have a little beach house there. Shack, really. A kind of get-away-from-it-all place. Get away from all what? We're school teachers. Jacksonville. Fran teaches English, and I'm what you call a student counselor. Oh, you, uh, give advice to kids? Well, they're not exactly kids. Not at 17 and 18. High school, yes. But at that age, adolescents have lots of problems, believe me. And uh, you straighten them out. Well, let's say I try. My husband has a degree in clinical psychology. Oh, very interesting. Well, I'll be back in a moment. Where are you going? Well, to heat up the coffee, Joe. They look like they could use some. No, well, what, well, what they need is a drink. Forget the coffee. Well, I don't need a drink. I, I'd rather have the coffee, thank you. Yeah, me too. Well, I'll get it. Uh, no, wait. Uh, excuse me. I'll give him a hand in the kitchen. Martin, there's something funny going on here. Yeah, I noticed the way Carrington, the one with the gun, kept watching the younger one like, well, a cat watching a mouse. I noticed that too, but 
What I mean, the younger one, Ronnie, he seemed to be trying to warn me about something. What do you mean, warn you? I don't know. I could be wrong, but there was something, seemed to me, something in his eyes. As if he were trying to warn me with his eyes. And speaking of eyes, I don't think he got that shiner in the fall. Neither do I. I'll come and get it, hot and steaming. Oh, I can use a cup of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here we are. That's cream and sugar. You can help yourself. Oh, thank you. How do you take yours, Mr. Prentice? Uh, black. And it's Ronnie. Oh, well, Fran, then. Okay. There you are. Mr. Carrington? Well, none for me. Uh, you play Scrabble, Fran? I love it. Well, have it a game with me. Of course. You know, come to think of it, maybe I'm biting off more than I can chew, taking on an English teacher. <laughs> what do you want, a handicap? <laughs> this is a nice place you've got here, Mr. Carrington. Yeah, I've been admiring some of the paintings on the walls. Who's the artist? A friend of mine. A distinctive technique. Yeah, he's got talent. And uh, problems. You think so? Oh, no offense. No, I... no, no offense. I'm, I'm interested. What makes you think he's got problems? Well... There's something curious about the way... The way... Yeah? It's hard to put into words. See, here in this landscape, that distant farmhouse is only partially finished. And here, here again, these trees are only half painted in. As if... Well, there's something wrong. As if the artist, for some reason, went just so far and no further. As if something stopped him. You shrinks are all alike. I beg pardon? Your wife said you were a psychologist. So? So right away you got to read something into this painting. Like the artist has problems because he didn't finish painting this or painting that. Maybe he ran out of paint. Did he? What? He's a friend of yours, you said. You know him. Did he run out of paint? Or does he just not finish what he starts? Hey, now take it easy, Joe. Why pull a gun on us? I just accidentally upset the Scrabble game, that's all. I thought you were going to shoot me. You're pretty edgy, Carrington. Sorry. You're practically a nervous man. But all that happened was Ronnie upset the Scrabble game. I said, I well, said, said I was I... sorry. Um, here, let me help you pick up the pieces. <sighs> then maybe we could all sit down and play. How about it, Mr. Halliday? Sure. Sure, help pass the time. Oh, you count me out. I'm going to lie down for a while. A few minutes ago, you wanted to play. Well, I don't now. Nonsense. You like Scrabble. Not when I'm up against an English teacher. She was beating the socks off me. We'll all play. Now sit down, Ronnie. Uh-uh. I'm sleepy, Joe. Uh, I'm going to catch you now. It looks like we'll have to play three-handed. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I get back. I won't be a minute. Martin, that boy's in trouble. Where'd you get that idea? He didn't upset the Scrabble game accidentally. He did it deliberately. After he spelled out the words, help me. Help me? Yes. I looked at the words then, at him, and he looked in Carrington's direction. Martin, that boy's in danger. Maybe we are, too. Joe, no, please, don't handcuff me to the bed. You're up to something out there, Ronnie. I'm not taking any chances. I swear I wasn't up to anything at all. You think I haven't noticed the looks between you and her? You think I haven't seen you trying to tell her something with your eyes? And why did you upset that Scrabble game? It was an accident. Yeah, some accident. And all of a sudden you're sleeping and you want to take a nap. Do you think you're kidding? Next thing I know, you'd be out that window trying to escape. With a hurricane raging out there, how far do you think I'd get? I don't think, I know. You're not getting beyond this bed. Not with these handcuffs on, you're not. We've got to do something. Fran, I warn you again, don't rush into something you'll be sorry for. But we've got to help that boy. For all we know, we've got to help ourselves. Martin, he's got a gun, and he's... Uh, more coffee before we start playing? No, thank you. Change your mind about a drink, Halliday? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I think I will. Uh, and on second thought, I, I, I'll change mine about the coffee. Help yourself. Scotch, bourbon, rye, what'll it be? What? Oh, uh, uh, bourbon, thanks. Coffee's cold. 
Mind if I heat it up, Mr. Carrington? Uh, of course not. There's a gas stove in the kitchen. Lucky we don't cook with electricity. It all went off hours ago. Kitchen's through that door. I'll just be a few minutes. Hey, what the point? Keep your voice down, Ron. Ron, you're soaked to the skin, drenched. I pretended I wanted to heat up the coffee, but I really wanted to get to you. I went out the kitchen door and came around to this window. Ronnie, what's the trouble? He's holding me for ransom. Ransom? He wants $100,000. A hundred? Thousand. My father is Garrett Prentice, the millionaire. Oh, I've heard of him, yes. Hill Carrington, if that's his name, phoned my father yesterday. The money is on the way, but what worries me is I'm sure Carrington's going to kill me once he gets it. But if he gets the ransom money... I don't think it'll make any difference. He knows I can identify him, so he hasn't much choice. He has to kill me. You and your husband, too. Yes. We could identify him. You've got to do something. We've got to do something. But what? That's the question, Ronnie. What? Your wife, she's taking her own sweet time about heating that coffee. Oh, here she is now. Where have you been? And your clothes are soaking wet. How did it happen, Fran? While the coffee was heating, I went to the kitchen door and opened it. What for? Well, to see what it was like out there. The wind caught the door and yanked it open. I went out to try to close it and... You're lying. What have you been up to? I haven't been up to anything. You I... went out the kitchen door and around back, didn't you? You made your way to the bedroom. No, I swear I didn't. Well, I'll soon find out. I'll go see. <laughs> Fran, have you gone crazy? You hit him with that candlestick. You knocked him cold. Get his gun and the key to the handcuffs out of his pocket. Handcuffs? Ronnie's handcuffs to the bed in there. Oh, Lord. Hey, here, take the gun while I hunt for the key. Oh, not this pocket. Yeah, here. Keep him covered, Fran. I'll release Ronnie. Mr. Halliday. It's okay, Ronnie. I don't know what this is all about yet, but I'll soon have these cuffs off you. Oh. Carrington's out cold. There. Oh, good. Where's his gun? My wife's got it. Keeping Carrington covered. Come on. He's still out, huh? Yes. All right, I'll take the gun, friend. Yes. Here, I don't want it. I don't even like the feel of it. Where's my husband? Well, still in the bedroom, I guess. What in the world is he doing in... Martin? Martin, what are you doing in there? Coming. I stopped to have a closer look at this. Well, what is it? It was hanging on the wall in his bedroom. But what is it? A straitjacket, Fran. A straitjacket? Ronnie, what would a straitjacket be doing in your... Oh, my God. That's right, Fran. You see, I'm insane. Joe used that straitjacket to keep me quiet when I got violent. Really violent. <laughs> but he won't be using it on me anymore. Not anymore. Thanks to you. As I said, we sometimes find ourselves in predicaments and wonder how we got there. Well, Fran and Martin Halliday needn't wonder how they got into theirs. They know. say we cannot escape what the fates have ordained shall be our future. Others contend that we create our own destinies, masters of our fate, captains of our soul, and all that. I don't know. Seems to me there's such a thing as luck, good and bad. And as Fran and Martin Halliday stare into the barrel of a gun held by Ronnie Prentice, I'd say they're just victims of circumstance. Wouldn't you? Joe uses his straitjacket on you when you become violent? He did. But as I just told you, he won't anymore. Thanks to you, dear impulsive Fran Halliday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Carrington's coming around. 
and see if I can help him. Leave him. He could be seriously hurt. Let's hope so. My head. My head. Johnny. How did you get that gun? She gave it to me. After she took it away from you. Oh, maybe you made a big mistake. But he told me you'd kidnapped him. We're holding him for ransom. And you swallowed that? I'm afraid I did. No, don't blame yourself too much. Ronnie's con smarter people than you. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Anna, you shouldn't have said that, Joe. You've offended her. She's an obvious narcissist type. You should have realized that. As you did. Well, of course. That's why I went after her sympathy instead of his. I knew she'd be a pushover. Wow. Quite the amateur psychologist. Amateur? I love a lot better psychologist than you are, Halliday. I'm not wasting my life as a kid counselor. And what's that supposed to mean? Ronnie, give me the gun. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Oh, Ronnie. One more step, Joe, and I'll kill you. No. Not me. Not after all these years. How many, Joe? I've lost count. Nineteen. In four months and 27 days. Oh, that's a long time. You never know how long. The gnawing tooth of time. Well, it's over now, Joe. End of the line and no transfer. No transfer for you either if you kill me. I'll put you in the asylum, Ron. Not me. Too clever. Well, would you all like a drink, or uh, is the situation sufficiently intoxicating? Your friend? No, thank you. Halliday? Not me. How about you, dear brother Joe? Dear, dedicated, generous, self-sacrificing, moderate brother... Dear, gentle, understanding, all-suffering keeper! Hit me just once again, Ron. And... And what? Skip it. <laughs> I'm going over to the bar to make myself a drink. Now, all of you stay right where you are. Don't move. Not an inch. I said not an inch! Well, I was only going to sit down in this chair and... Oh! My jaw. I'll do more than kill you with this gun if you disobey me again. Now, don't move. Not an inch. Martin. Oh, Martin, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Oh. Are you sure you don't want to drink? Anyone? It's your last chance, you know. Well, suit yourselves. And now, who's first? You, Halliday? Yeah, why not you? Just one bullet through the head. Painless. So don't be afraid. Ron, don't do it. Are you afraid, Halliday? I... I don't think so. No. Not afraid of death? How come? Oh, I... I don't know. I guess if you believe in God, and I do, I guess you... Well, you can't be very much afraid of anything, really. Well, many people who believe in God are afraid to die. Wouldn't you say? No. I don't see how they could be afraid if they did. Oh, provocative speculation. Give me the gun, Ron. Oh, you're afraid, aren't you? When I point the gun at you like this and you don't know whether I'm going to pull the trigger or not, you are afraid, aren't you, Joe? I certainly don't want to die. Yet you believe in God. Maybe I do and maybe I don't. You do? You do? You told me you did! I remember a long time ago, you, you told me that you did. You did. Okay, I did. Now you're trying to confuse me. You, he, 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 he does it all the time. He keeps making me think I got things twisted, all mixed up, that I'm that I'm not thinking straight, that I'm crazy. Now, don't start that with me, Joe. Now, I'm warning you. Don't start. All right, Ron. And then don't take that tone either. You know I can't stand that tone. Right, Ron. I will not be treated like a child in a tantrum. I will not, Joe. I will not. Then why don't you stop behaving like one? How are they doing? Cross him. Why not? Go ahead, Halliday. Cross me. Say anything you like to me. Anything. And see what happens. You won't? Well, then how about you, Fran? You say something. You, you cross me. Oh, won't you please let us go? Please. We have nothing to do with all of this. We just happen to come in here out Look, of the... Save it. You can't reason with a homicidal maniac. He... He really is? Yes, Mrs. Halliday. He really is. Liar! Liar! Clever. Oh, oh, yeah, clever. But not as clever as I am. You see, he wants my father's money all for himself. There's enough for both, more than enough. When my father goes to that 
great hunt club in the sky. Yeah, marvelous huntsman, my father. Red coat, breeches, top hat, oh, the whole bit. Ta -ta 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 hunting we will go. And all fall down and go smash. Smash! <laughs> but not for him. Oh, I'll never smash for him. For me. <laughs> for me. What do you mean, smash for you? Would you like... Would you like to know? Would you... Would you really be interested? I would, yes. No, we... <laughs> We never tell about it to each other. Never have, never will. What would father's friends say? G Gary Prentice's father, the maniac. That's what they'd say. Garrett Prentice would shrivel up with shame. Well, who exactly is Garrett Prentice? Who is... Well, Joe, here, here's a man who never heard of father. Or a wonderment. Oh, well, I have a... My dear man, where have you been? Everyone has turned to father. I'm afraid I'm not in that category. Oh, then let 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 me tell you about him, all about him, and about Joe and me. No, no, don't please. Oh, no, last stop, Joe. Final destination. Why not open the luggage? You won't be taking it with you. You see, Joe's mama married my dear papa after his papa died. Now, in, as you might say, the ordinary course of biological eventuality, I appeared on the scene. And alas, poor Joe's mama left it. Joe hated me for killing his mama. No, Ryan, I never... You did. You did. If you didn't, why did you hit me and knock me down and make me hurt my head? I didn't mean to. You were two years old, almost two. And you always wanted whatever I had, a toy, a game, whatever. That day... Well, I wouldn't give up what you wanted, and I pushed you away. But you knocked me down. You knocked me down, and you hurt my head, Joe. I did injure him. I am responsible. When I pushed him and he fell... Knocked down? All right, Ron. When I knocked him down, he struck his head on the metal corner of a bed. He was unconscious for more than an hour. And when, when... When... Go on. When the doctor brought him around, he seemed all right, except for headaches that bothered him from time to time, but otherwise all right. Then when he was about four, he tried to kill his governess. At four? Yeah. He wanted her to give him something. I don't remember what, and she wouldn't. And he, he flew into a rage. He bit, he clawed, he kicked her. Small as he was, she was no match for him. And he'd have killed her if other servants hadn't come in time and dragged him off. And then... A year or so later, he attacked a playmate, boy his age, and, and he would have killed him if there hadn't been other boys who pulled him away. Good heavens. From then on, he couldn't be sent to school. He had to be tutored at home. He'd fly into these sudden, unexpected rages, attack his tutors. He nearly murdered one with a pair of scissors. The psychiatrist who examined him, did they have He's any... He's never been to a psychiatrist. Well, you can't mean that. It's true. But that's... It's senseless. Garrett Prentice, senseless? Wealthy financier, handsome playboy, beloved darling of the jet set, senseless? Oh, no. Heartless, yes. Oh, God, yes. Heartless. He couldn't bear the shame, the notoriety of others knowing. But, Carrington, Joe, you can't mean that all these years you've taken care of him alone. It was my fault. So you took on the burden of... Wouldn't you? You've dedicated your entire life to him. Oh, it isn't as bad as you make it sound. Most of the time, he's rational enough. Our lives are quite ordinary, except... I have to keep watching for the signs, the symptoms that warn me that another attack is coming on. I try to give him as much freedom as I can. Still, I do have to keep an eye on him. And you know I hate being watched. You only know how it feels to have someone's eyes glued on you all the... Why are you looking at me like that, Holiday? Like what? As if... As if you're studying me. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. Answer me. Answer me or I'll put a hole in your head. No! Take that gun away from your temple! Easy, Fran, easy. All right. I have been studying you. Why? There's something... I can't put my finger on it, but... 
Something... I've known kids. Well, young men and women, really. High school seniors who... Who seem rational at times. It's only the calm before the storm, Halliday. It's one of those symptoms that I mentioned. The silence before the volcano erupts, eh, Joe? Something like that. And then? Boom! I erupt. Well, better to do that than to hold it in and let it eat you alive inside like most people. Like you, Halliday. Me? Nothing's eating me. Liar. You're all but eaten up with bitterness, frustration. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't be more off base, believe me. Am I? Ask her. Ask Fran. She knows. Am I right, Fran? <laughs> well, answer him, Fran. He's right. <laughs> you see? Oh, come on, Fran. He is right, Martin. You know it. I know it. We just never talk about it, that's all. Talk about what? Nothing. Forget it. No. You just said that he's right. That I am eaten alive inside with frustrations, regrets. You are? Darling, you know you are. You never mention it because... Well, because you're you. Good Lord, Fran. Are you... Are you talking about what happened at State College? Is there anything else we don't talk about since it happened? What in heaven's name, Fran? That was 12 years ago. It makes no sense. Doesn't it? Oh, Martin. Dear, darling Martin. Doesn't it? You know, maybe it does. Maybe it does at that. If all these years you've been thinking that I... Because I never talked, thinking you ruined my life. I did. You know I did. Ruined it? Fran, dearest, you made it. How could you have lived with me all these years and not know that I... I oh, what a fool I've been. You? Yes, me, a so-called psychologist. Not knowing you'd feel guilty. That you'd... But... Martin... You've kept silent about it all these years. Kept silent? Nothing. I haven't kept silent. I just haven't talked to you about it because I scarcely ever think about it. And when I do, I'm glad it happened. You're just saying that. Because... I'm not saying anything. I'm telling you the truth. Too late. Too late. Just too late. Because I'm sick of all this talk. The time has come to erupt. To strike. And I think. Now I'm sure. I'll strike at you first, dear friend. <gasps> oh, yes. I'll kill you first. twist of fate, an ironic twist, when in the very instant Martin Halliday discovers that all unknowingly he and his wife have misunderstood each other over the years, the homicidal maniac Ron Prentice kills Fran Halliday. Remarkable, isn't it? That no matter how intimately our lives are bound up with another's, we never really know what he's like underneath. What he truly thinks, truly feels. It's almost inconceivable that Fran Halliday would believe that her husband Martin has been eaten up with bitterness and frustration over something she did 12 years ago, when actually the reverse is true. But no matter now, it seems, because Ron Prentice has just fired point blank at Fran. Fran! Uh, Fran! Uh, I'm, I'm all right. I think. He, he missed. 
Yeah, lucky you, Fran. You jerked your head at the right moment or you'd be dead with a bullet between your eyes right now. Fool, you crazy fool. Yeah, my dear brother, you won't think so when I finally decide to kill you, too. You kill any one of us, it'll be the end for you, Ron. Oh, no, not an end. A beginning. I'll put you away behind bars in an asylum for the criminally insane. You could never bear that, Ron. I've borne it for nearly 20 years. Nineteen years, four months, twenty-seven days, as you said. What are you talking about? You've lived an almost normal life. I've seen to that. Yeah, never a day out of your sight. The feel of your eyes always on me, waking, sleeping. You were always there. Never alone, never. Handcuffed, straight-jacketed, chained. Chained to you. Chained. You think I have never wanted to be alone? To live my life? To fall in love, marry, have kids, even to go for a walk by myself? You think it's been any easier for me, chained to you? You made the chain, not me. You. Well, now I'm going to break it, Joe. Once and for all, break it. No, don't shoot. Run, please, I beg you. Don't. Hey, look. Ah! I thought we were finished. You are. What? The house can't last. They said on the radio these winds would at 110, 120 miles an hour. And that's what they're starting to do. And we damn well better ought to get out of here. But where can we go? The beach. There are caves down there. We can make it. No, dear brother. Not you. Me. What do you mean? You. Fran, go into the bedroom and get those handcuffs my brother used on me. What are you up to? You'll find a second set in the top bureau drawer. Joe always kept a spare. Put in a straitjacket, too. I... I... I don't... Do as I tell you. And don't get any fancy ideas, or it'll be the end of these two. Do as he says, Mrs. Halliday. All right. What rotten scheme have you dreamed up now, Ron? Well, not me. The hurricane. The hurricane dreamed it up. What the hell are you talking about? That. Just that. Those winds are getting worse. The house can't last. It'll be ripped up. Torn asunder, smashed to kindling. And you, all three of you, will be smashed to kindling. Human kindling with it. Ah, here's impulsive Fran with the handcuffs and the straitjacket. You, Halliday, put that straitjacket on, Brother Joe. Ron, Ronnie, you can't do this. I'm not. You are. Get that jacket on him. Now! He means what he says, Halliday. He'll kill you if you don't obey him. Come on, now. Get this jacket on me. Halliday! If I could only be sure... Of what, Martin? Sure of what? That he won't... That he can't shoot to kill. Try me, Halliday. I'm going to count five. If you haven't got that straight jacket on Joe, I'll put a bullet through your head. And he can do it. He's a crack shot. Then how come he missed Fran? I missed because... Don't give me that. Fran couldn't have jerked her head fast enough to avoid the bullet. You missed. Deliberately missed. Why? Halliday, you're pushing your luck. Maybe. I'm not saying I couldn't be wrong. No one ever really knows what's in another man's head. But if I'm right... Martin! Give me the gun, Ron. I warn you, put that straight jacket on Joe or I'll kill you here and now. I don't think so. If you were going to shoot us... You'd have done it instead of talking about it. How are they? I've been sizing you up, Ron. The way I size up high school kids sent to me when they're in trouble. They do a lot of talking, too. A lot of bluster, a lot of bluff. Half the time, not knowing it is nothing but bluff because nobody's called them on it. Well, I'm calling you. Here and now, calling you, Ron. One more step. Halliday, in heaven's name, you're not dealing with a high school kid. You're dealing with a maniac. That's the chance I'm taking, Joe. That your brother is no more insane than I am. Well, you are insane if you think he isn't. I've been with him night and day all his life. I tell you, he's mad. I don't believe it. He believes it. Oh, yes, he believes it, all right. Right now, this minute, he believes he'll shoot to kill me. But I'm gambling that when the chips are down, he'll throw in his hand. Oh, you seem very sure of yourself, Halliday. I'm anything but sure, Ron. But what have I got to lose? If I don't take that gun from you, we'll all die when the hurricane destroys the house. Even if you do shoot to kill, 
and do kill me, it'll give Joe a chance to get that gun away from you. Joe? Yeah? Get ready. If he shoots me, you'll have a split second to jump him. Okay? Okay. Martin! Take it easy, Fran. All right, Ron. One more step and you're dead. Not if I'm right about you, Ronnie. I'm willing to take a calculated risk based on what I've learned about you in the past hour. Learned? About me? You nearly killed your governess, Joe said, when you were a child. But didn't. I was stopped before I could. Were you? Or or could you have killed her before anyone came to save her? But held off until they came. What about the playmate you tried to murder? Somehow you didn't succeed there, either. Or the tutor you nearly killed with the scissors. Or my wife, Fran. Those pictures on the walls. You painted them, didn't you? What of it? None of them. Not one is finished. That's what of it. Why? Because you don't finish anything you start. You want to know the truth as I see it, Ronnie? I don't give a damn what... As I see it, when you were a child and Joe knocked you down, yes, you were knocked unconscious. But when you came to, you felt a, a, a warmth, a security you'd never felt before. Because for the first time in your life, you were the center of attention. Especially your father's attention. You felt it. Loved it. Wanted more of it. Wanted to shoot. You... You... you. As time went on and you got no more attention, you missed it. Yearned for it. Then, one day, as I see it, when your governess refused to give you something you wanted, you flew at her in a childish tantrum. A tantrum, Ronnie. That's all it was. But again, you got attention. And again, you found it pleasurable and wanted more. And had found a way to get more. Am I right? You can't be. Ron, if I'm right, for nearly 20 years, you've been playing at...